why I'm teaching, why is that important? Good morning and welcome into Mornings on Main Street, Southern Middle Tennessee. I'm Chris Yao, standing in front of the Polk home this morning, where behind me you can see Preservation Park being assembled here. A five-year project has finally gotten underway and will be completed uh, later this fall. We're very much looking forward to it. You can actually find a story on that in this week's Main Street Murray, so make sure to pick up your copy. We'll tell you what's left on the front page of Main Street Murray in the wrap. On the front page of this week's Main Street Murray, you can find a story about the uh, UAW strike that is taking place across the country. In Spring Hill, however, they are still working at the local GM plant. And you can find a little bit of information about what this strike is doing, what they are expecting, what GM is offering to UAW, as well as how Spring Hill's uh, workforce fits into the UAW's strike plans. You can also find on the front page a story uh, about the 9-11 event that took place last week that we had the feature on uh, on this week's show, or I'm sorry, on last week's show here on Mornings on Main Street in Southern Middle Tennessee. You can also find a story about a local recovery clinic that is uh, that has now opened its doors here in Columbia. The safe uh, safe house is, uh, is, is open and you can find a story there as well. All of that, and of course, again, that story on Preservation Park. Plenty more on the inside of Main Street Murray, so make sure to pick up your print edition very soon. All right, we're going to send it down to Pulaski, where Scott Stewart is standing by. Hey everybody, it's Scott Stewart with the Pulaski Citizen Wrap this week. This week's Citizen Spotlight is Danny Hyatt down there at the Pulaski Stockyard. Danny is top and center of our front page this week. Also on the front page is a story from the Pulaski Board of Mayor and Alderman from last week's meeting. City Council is trying to get control of all the big signs that are popping up around town. And uh, they're looking to finalize a moratorium on new signs while the Planning Commission considers a sign ordinance. Matter of fact, there's a Planning Commission work session coming up Thursday, the 21st, at noon at City Hall to discuss the sign ordinance. The moratorium will be taken up at next week's City Council meeting. Also in that Pulaski City Council story, as the photo on the front page indicates, the city is amending its budget to uh, include $475,000 to buy the old Merco Genesco building over on Cemetery Street. Building 8 at Tanglewood Apartments caught on fire again Monday. Minor Hill is getting ready for a fall on the hill on October the 7th. Inside we've got an article from Chris Yow up in Murray County uh, talking about uh, Spring Hill, the city of Spring Hill honoring Giles County murder victim, Jim Grimes. Also inside, we've got information from the recent Ardmore Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. They've cut the ribbon at Los Hermanos restaurant right up the street here. And Giles Pass highlights the Wales community this week. It's all in the Pulaski Citizen this week. Get your copy today. We'll be back right after this. Having a good confident smile and being able to portray that positivity to others is really helpful. A professional family atmosphere is what we get every time we come here. Our hygienists do a better job at kind of assessing mouths and coming up with plans than most dentists do. They're very kind and they're very aware of other people. I think if there's things that I would want you to leave here with, I want you to feel like you were heard, that we listened to you, and I want you to feel like that your concerns were addressed. Piggly Wiggly, located in Neely's Mill Shopping Center, is Columbia's locally owned and operated Cost Plus 10 grocery store dedicated to serving the community with low prices and smiling faces. Piggly Wiggly offers fresh, hand-cut meats daily as well as daily hot plate lunches from their deli counter. You're certain to see smiling faces and a helping hand when you're here at Piggly Wiggly. Come by and check out our fresh produce, high quality meats, and more. Down home, down the street, we'll see you at the Pig. Hey, Scott Stewart with you here, and I got uh, Pulaski Mayor J.J. Brindley, and you know we've talked about a lot of stuff 
here recently, JJ, but there's a lot of new stuff going on in Pulaski that at least uh, just within the last couple of months that uh, I thought you might want to hit on. Yeah, uh, again, a shout out to our Park and Recs for uh, um, all they do, uh, keeping everything looking nice. But uh, if you haven't been to Cave Springs Park lately, right. ride by there. Uh, see uh, the uh, Color Troops Memorial statue. Absolutely. It, it's amazing. Miss Sims uh, was a big factor in this. Uh, uh, there was a lot of people that stepped up and uh, made this happen. And uh, I've got to, uh, the honor and privilege to be out there the day that we revealed it. And uh, wow, it was amazing. It was We had people from all over, uh, good positive uh, feedback from everyone. And it was a. Uh, uh, we were very excited about that. Uh, a lot of people worked hard. I know Vice Mayor Ricky Keith. I would ride by and see him out there with a blower and a pressure yeah. washer. Uh, <laughs> he and uh, um, he went above and beyond. Yes, sure. and so many people that helped put that together, and we're um, uh, we're excited to see uh, see that now, and, yeah. and people be able to drive up and to to visit that. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, we also uh, WD Savage Park is going to uh, be getting some upgrades here soon with new basketball courts. The tennis courts are going to be uh, taken out, and we're going to repave those courts, uh, new basketball. We're going to t take those tennis courts out and then put basketball courts in and uh, uh, put uh, new basketball goals up and make it really nice um, uh, for everyone. But, uh, um, uh, you know, and some of the new uh, uh, things with the UT Southern, you know, I was just, um, uh, day before yesterday, I was at, uh, TCAT graduation and then right. a UT Southern uh, kickoff. I and know, yeah, went, and, that awesome? and that was fun. And, you know, talking about TCAT, we're, it's such a blessing to have TCAT in our community. Yeah. You know, they're fixing to do a $29 million uh, facility upgrade. They got a $29 million grant from uh, Governor Lee. Right. And I'm going to tell you, Mike Whitehead and his team are working extremely hard. Uh, talk with them uh, a lot. We've built a very strong relationship with TCAT, and uh, uh, they're doing wonders out there. So having TCAT coming in, uh, well, they've been here in our community, yeah. but getting the almost $30 million dollar grant right. and doing the um, uh, the new uh, construction on the um, uh, the buildings and, and really fixing that up is going to be uh, a blessing to this community and, and pull a lot of people uh, from different communities here. Yeah, too. Mm -hmm. And I think the city of Pulaski actually added uh, has added a new holiday. Yeah, we have uh, uh, Juneteenth. Uh, right. Uh, it, um, uh, we uh, you know it was the uh, we were glad and it was the right thing to do. Well, and of course, if you want to see it in the city of Pulaski. Uh, meetings we put them on Pulaski yeah. Citizen Live YouTube channel every, live and also on Facebook live every week every time every other week when they have a meeting you can find out something new just about every time you come in here I do and I've been doing this for a while now and I'm still coming up with stuff new so it's it's, yeah. it's a lot of new positive stuff as you said yeah. going on in the city of Pulaski yeah it is and uh, you know thankful too to have a good strong uh, city council yeah I never yeah. Uh, wanna uh, forget the city council from you know Mr. Massey uh, to uh, 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 Miss Miles, Mr. Worsham, uh, Mr. Gentry, and Mr. Bryant, and Mr. Keith, yeah. uh, Vice Mayor Keith. I, you know, we have a great team, and we all work together well. And uh, if we have an issue, we might all not all agree uh, on it, but we work right. it out and we talk about it, and uh, we uh, we enjoy working together. I, I, I'm very excited uh, to uh, to be able to say that. The development so. board and the EDC board mm -hmm. that hey, we need to make sure that we're being selective in the kind of uh, industries that we're getting in here the kind of jobs that we're bringing has yeah we've already in just the last couple of months reconnected very strong with the state right. our relationships having the state down coming back into city hall meeting with them uh county executive mr stowe myself phil has met with the state uh, we met with uh, several other organizations tva of, of what's out there again when we talked about grants earlier right. and we're really connecting with all the other counties and cities and it's a very strong partnership right now right. it's been right. it's been a good thing and one thing you guys came have come, have come out of this with is uh what what happened last week or earlier this week i guess it was last week where you uh the, the voted to send a letter of intent out the industrial development board voted to send a letter of intent out to buy to uh, possibly build an uh, a spec building 
get a grant to build, build a spec building. Yes, sir. That we're we're extremely proud of that. Uh, you know, it's uh, the grant can go up to five million dollars uh, here, and we can if we were to max this out and uh, uh, do that, you know, we would be spending you know only seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for a five million dollar, uh, for building. A five million dollar yeah, building. That's pretty. You cool. know, I think anybody would do that. Yeah. Deal. And so <laughs> it's you know it, but it's again you have to be out you have to be uh, everything's coming down through the state you yes, have yes. to have the relationships with the state and this in the state all the different entities out there they want to help right, they want right. to come in and it's just building again that relationship uh, with these people and and they've enjoyed we've uh, we've uh, gotten along great and it's been fun and it, you know it's a uh, 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 we're we're very excited about possibly the spec build, and you know and that leads into the the workforce part. Um, right. People start thinking, you know, well, uh, how where are you going to get the employees? What are you going to do? Well, we're centrally located, you know, we can pull out of Athens, we can pull out of uh, different areas, we can, uh, you know, Alabama to all over uh, southern Middle Tennessee. But what we have to do is get involved with uh, TCAT yeah. to be, uh, and and TCAT is wonderful to work with. UT Southern is same. We get with them, talk with them, see them, and get them in with these local industries. So yeah. what do they need, and can we provide yeah. that at our schools? Great. All right. Well, thank you again, JJ, and uh, we appreciate your time. And we'll be back right after this. Thank you. Thanks, man. Mockingbird Title and Escrow is an attorney-owned and operated full-service title company in Middle Tennessee. We get your deals closed without worry and fuss. We're a family business that offers the highest level of expertise in our industry when it comes to closing and funding your real estate transactions. And it's it's a job I really love. Uh, I'm passionate about this. I'm enthusiastic about this. I like to think we're pretty well-rounded and can deal with a wide range of, of needs and a wide range of clients. Call 615-274-8698 today. Mid-Tennessee Bone & Joint treats your orthopedic injuries and existing conditions. Our trained physicians will get you back in the game faster. Contact us at 931-381-2663 or www.mtbj.net. We're here with Clay Doggett and Clay. Uh, we're, we, like I said, we're right on the heels of the special session and there's the second part of this that I think we need to take into account uh, as far as the reason for this special session had to do with the Covenant shooting because you stood right up there in the county commission not too long ago and and gave and told all that had gone on with with the regular session and i wanted to get get you to go ahead and talk about some of that that y'all have done some great stuff safety wise right um you know like i told the special the uh special session the county commission right uh like i told them back uh i guess it was in july i guess we were up there i think there. it was yeah um we put $232 million yeah. in the budget this last year to help with uh, safety of our schools. Uh, yeah. uh, a large portion of that money is going to be utilized for providing SROs for every school in this state. Now, uh, one of the things that, uh, that occurred that we did not foresee in that was uh, some you've got some of these charter schools across the state right. that are public schools, but they're it's an interesting dynamic how they're it is, yeah. how they're done. And so uh, in Davidson County, there was no memorandum of understanding between the metro uh, system and the, those charter schools, so they did not they were not able to get those SROs. And so we worked on getting that hammered out while we were in special session this time, but. $232 million to go to school safety. That included having an SRO in every school in this state, uh, public school. If you are like Giles County, we already had SROs. You still, We still got that money yeah. to use. So we could have either used that money to put an additional SRO in the schools. We could use that money to, to make sure, obviously, that we had the SROs in the school, but you could pull some of those that had been in the schools before maybe serving in a couple different capacities as right. a SRO and a patrolman and put more people on the road. So it was a, it was a great idea to do that uh, for the state to, to step in and to fund that yeah. going forward. So we did that and there were also safety measures that we passed to where schools could upgrade their, their, uh, you know, security systems. Yeah. Uh, they could do a lot of what we call hardening of their perimeters and their, their school buildings, making sure they get the things that they stand, uh, that they need. And 
And yeah, I also, think we've seen that too uh, with the bullet, uh, some of the bulletproof glasses or, yes. or some coverings on the glass that got, makes them bulletproof. The ability to not see into the school, which I think is an amazing, mm -hmm. uh, makes a really, really hardens you a whole lot more sure. than a lot of people realize. The uh, the uh, staggered entryways. I mean, there's just a lot of things that you guys have made possible. Through, and, and we can see it right here in Giles County. Mm -hmm. You just go to one of the schools close to you. And when you drive up, you can't see inside that school because of the coverings, and now those coverings are bulletproof. Sure, right. absolutely. I was going to touch on that, the, that film, protective film that they can put on the glass. But, Scott, you go back and look, um, a lot of the schools across our state, especially in the rural areas, are 50, 60, 70 years old. Mm -hmm. The buildings are, you know, they're still being used. They're in great shape. You know, there's been repairs that have been made to them yeah. over the years to, to be able to keep them in use but when those buildings were designed 50 60 70 years ago and constructed they were not constructed in mind of no. school safety and no. so they were looked at you know they were more uh efficiency and education you know of putting kids here and kids here and just putting them where you could fit people so as years have progressed there's other things that have been done to to add safety and security to the schools so you know, you take schools like we have in, in Giles County that are older schools. A lot of these safety measures will help benefit them with this yeah. protective film or some of these this glass that they're able to install, staggering entrance ways. Uh, speaking with someone the other day about, you know, coming up with plans on how to, you know, safety plans, exterior doors, making them always be locked, yeah. having alarms on them. Uh, there was one piece of legislation in this special session that will, uh, I believe it's going to be brought back up whenever we come into a regular session, but it's an alarm system that goes on kind of like a fire alarm Yeah. Uh, for uh, if, if you have a, a, a violent occurrence that happens at a school that you're able to... Uh, lockdown. Yeah, it, it's a lockdown. It's an alarm that goes off like the fire alarm. It automatically alerts law enforcement EMS, uh, fire department, all your first responders are made aware of it. It, 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 it would um, alert central office so that they're aware. Uh, if you've got the camera systems, the cameras automatically pop up so that people can see. I mean, it's some, it's some really good technology, but that's something that we were really kind of pushing yeah. through to, to see done. So we're, we're always looking for, for bigger and better ways uh, to uh, add uh, security uh, yeah. to our schools. There's a couple of, there's, there was one other thing that, that you talked about when, you first, when we first started this discussion, Clay, uh, uh, as far as how mental health plays into this. Am I yes, right? you're yeah. right. And so we've had, uh, there was a lot of really good discussions about mental health. Um, a lot of things that we had discovered over the last couple years that have been brought to our attention used to, the state had state-run hospitals yep. uh, for people that were having, uh, you know, that were found in need of some mental health uh, attention. And so in the last 15 years, I guess it was, they started slowly closing a lot of those hospitals, moving uh, those facilities, scaling them down, scaling them back. We only have a few places right now. So if, if someone was having a, a mental health crisis or was in need of some mental health attention that required hospitalization, uh, they would have to either go to Nashville or Knoxville or out west, uh, western part of the state right now, but they don't have enough beds right. there to be able to, to see these folks and help get the treatment that they need. And so a lot of times from reports that we're hearing from law enforcement and other health care providers, is that they're, these people are just not getting the, they're just not getting what- Maybe falling through they, the cracks. Almost. They're falling through the cracks. A lot of this falls through the cracks. And, and also our mental health providers that we have in our communities are really spread thin. Oh yeah. Uh, and so, uh, and there's not really been incentive to, for folks to go into that profession because it's, it's kind of one of those things where you have from my understanding where you know there's there's just not much that that could be could have been done in a lot of places just based off of the number of beds that have been right. that are down the facilities that could help assist providers in in communities and so we looked at several different things that dealt with mental health one of those was was uh, raising the reimbursement rates 
so that we can go ahead and open up more beds. So yeah. Peninsula over around the, the East Tennessee area, around Knoxville area, uh, they'll be able to open up like 500 beds from That's what I great. was told just you know, by, by this appropriation that we did on mental health. So is there uh, anything else that kind of happened in those eight days that you guys spent on the hill? Uh, anything else that you want to talk about before we move on to uh, maybe a couple other subjects? I'll just go back to what I kind of alluded to earlier, that there was a lot of really good ideas that, yeah. that people had that um, take more discussion than just what you can get in eight days. And right. so, um, you know, I, I fully expect that we're going to see, you know, going forward into the next session then the next part of our session that begins in january it's going to be a lot of focus on public safety and continued you know conversations about mental health as well so that's okay. probably going to be the theme of the the last part of the 113th right. general that's assembly that's, that's great thank you again thank you guys we'll be right back right after this Custom Stone Handler supplies over 600 distributors and suppliers with quality stone products. Along with River Stone, we produce and distribute over 100 building, landscape, and other bulk products. Our goal is to provide quality products, service, and partnerships to ensure our customers' success. We firmly believe that the measure of any person or company is how they treat other people and customers. Give them a call at 931-490-4990 or visit customstonehandlers.com. Welcome back into Mornings on Main Street, Southern Middle Tennessee. It's time now to take a look at sports. We've got Maurice Patton and Wade Neely. We'll start in Murray County with Mo. Thanks, Chris. Week five of the high school football season was a pretty special week for Murray County as all four 11-man football teams won. First time since 2017 that that's taken place. And we've got coverage of all of that in this week's Main Street Murray print edition that comes out today. As Columbia Academy went on the road, picked up a big victory at Donaldson Christian. Also, Columbia Central went on the road and picked up a big win at Lawrence County. In fact, three of the four were on the road. Spring Hill won at James Lawson and Mount Pleasant defeated visiting Summertown. Also, we've got coverage of Independence's win up at Beach, Loretto's win at home against Lewis County, and Summit's tough game up at Brentwood over the weekend. So again, all of that in this week's Main Street Murray. Also, Kalioka Volleyball on a little bit of a roll. Chris Yow's got some coverage of the Lady Warriors out there, and Columbia Central and Spring Hill played Quite the exciting soccer match last week. We've got coverage of that as well. And those two are set to meet next week. We'll be covering that. Also, in the upcoming Main Street Murray and on the website at MainStreetMurray.com, speaking of Columbia Central and Spring Hill, the two of them play volleyball this week. So we'll be on hand for that. So again, be sure and pick up this week's Main Street Murray be sure and click on MainStreetMurray.com for all of the sports that are going on in and around Murray County. Thanks, Mo. We're going to go now to Wade Neely down in Pulaski. Wade? Big week in the sports section for us here at the Pulaski Citizen, including our headline story, our top story, Giles County left-handed senior ace Carter Kelly is committed to be the next member of the University of Georgia baseball squad as Kelly makes his commitment official just a couple of weeks ago. Caught up with Carter, also caught up with Bobcats head coach Dustin Hill, and uh, that was a terrific story. Uh, a lot of fun uh, background on Carter as he's kind of matured and grown, uh, learning under guys like Jake Carden and Jack Harper, who were two senior quality pitchers last year for Giles County, but now Carter is going to be thrust into a bigger role, and we also obviously talk about his commitment to the University of Georgia. We obviously have words also on the Cornersville-Richland game that does go in favor of the Bulldogs. It was a big win for Cornersville. 62-28 to is your final last Friday. Richland never really got going. 
uh, kind of keeping it close midway through the first quarter, but Cornersville scored three times in a span of about seven plays to really kind of pull away from that one. But we have uh, a feature story from our good friend and staff writer, Mark Mize, on that. Also, I have a nice little feature uh, and a couple of nice photos, if I may say so myself, uh, from the UT Southern Men's Soccer Program. Firehawks are now 5-1-1. One, and one. They're playing under first-year interim head coach Brett Bolin. And Coach Bolin and the Firehawks picked up a nice win, 8 to nothing, 8-0, as it were, last Wednesday at Grissom Pitch versus Brescia University. And they followed up with a 1-1 draw versus Blue Mountain College in their conference opener. They have two huge games coming up this weekend as they take on national powerhouses, William Carey University and the University of Mobile. You can read all of that. We obviously have words every single week from our good friend Larry Woody. And as an online exclusive this week, we have our first piece from our good friend Terry McCormick at TitanInsider.com. Read all that online at PulaskiCitizen.com after the Tennessee Titans bounce back with a nice overtime win versus the Los Angeles Chargers. That's all for us. A reminder that we have Richland at Huntland on Friday, and we have Giles County at home to Lincoln County. And you can hear both of our games online at Pulaski Citizen Live. Make sure you visit PulaskiCitizen.com, click on the Pulaski Citizen Live button, or download Mixler and search PCL GCHS or PCL Richland. Wade Neely, sports editor at the Pulaski Citizen, signing out. Thanks, fellas. We greatly appreciate it. All right. When we come back, we've got more mornings on Main Street right after this. This is Chris Yao with Main Street Sports Today. Every show, Mo Patton and I welcome friends from all across the sports landscape, from high school coaches and reporters to national, college, and pro sports personalities. You never know who might stop by for a chat. AP Tennessee Sports Editor, three-time Tennessee Sports Writer of the Year 2020 TSWA Hall of Famer. She covers the Titans, the Predators, the Grizzlies, college football, and hoops. Please make welcome, Teresa Walker. Former University of Tennessee, former Team USA Olympian, XI Young Award winner, R.A. Dickey. R.A., did I miss anything? Man, that was sweet. <laughs> yeah, I need to listen to that before I go to bed every night. That was nice. Has five sports Emmys. That's not bad for the other guy in Wham. Ryan <laughs> McGee. <laughs> other guy Wham married the best looking girl banana rama, so other guy Wham had pretty good life. From preps to pros, we're taking on the sports topics you care about. Tune in across Main Street Media social platforms at 2 p.m. or on demand on your podcast distribution platform of choice. Jones and Lang Sporting Goods here in Columbia has been outfitting teams, officials, and anybody else from T-ball to college for 50 plus years. Be sure and check them out at 931-388-8060 or online at jonesandlang.com. Jones and Lang Sporting Goods, the look of a winner. Zion Christian Academy, zioneagles.org or 931-388-5731. You can schedule your appointment. Go toward their campus. It is beautiful over there and you're definitely going to want to see it. Again, it's zioneagles.org. Give them a call, 931-388-5731 and schedule your tour today. Welcome back into Mornings on Main Street, Southern Middle Tennessee. Time now to take a look at your weather from our friends at Tennessee Valley Weather. From the Tennessee Valley Weather Center, this is your weather today. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Kelly Rawson here in the Tennessee Valley Weather Center with a check at your forecast for the rest of today. Once again, we are going to be dry today with a partly cloudy sky starting off this morning as well as this afternoon. I think we stay mainly dry for today, a less than 10% chance of rain. I'd say maybe, just maybe, these very, very slightest possibility of a little pop-up shower for the afternoon. But again, I think most of us do stay dry with temperatures in the low to mid 80s for your Wednesday and then clear for the overnight, but a few clouds filtering in for your Thursday morning. And we may see a few rain showers Thursday morning, but that will clear off for the afternoon. Here is your seven day forecast from the Tennessee Valley Weather Center. We do have a few rain showers possible on Thursday with just about a 20% chance of rain, a 10 to 20% chance we'll call it. But then we dry out for Friday, for Saturday, then rain chances do return for the second half of the weekend. That's going to do it for this edition of Mornings on Main Street, Southern Middle Tennessee. Once again, you can find us here each and every week at 10 a.m. on Wednesdays across social media platforms on X, on Facebook, 
And you can also find us on the Main Street Media TV app. Just download on your iPhone or Android device as well as your Roku, Apple, or Fire Stick device. And, of course, you can always watch us at MainStreetMediaTV.com. Until next time, we'll see you right back on Main Street here in Southern Middle Tennessee.